615-641-7484. Ocala's Information Station, 1370 WOCA. Ocala! Six minutes after 11 o'clock. Thank you for tuning in this Friday morning. Do you know what today is? Today is National Cheeseburger Day. Did you know that? It's also National Aging, aging Day. Oh, gosh. Where are my notes? I wanted to read it. Now I don't have it. <laughs> cheeseburgers to aging. I, we I, all cheeseburgers love cheeseburgers. To aging. So, so let me tell you this. When I was... Uh, well, a lot of you may know that I, I do artwork. I do... Uh, portraits and I've done pastels and paintings and so do you Robin but I, I had an assignment once to do uh, something with the pastels I can't remember what it was but that's besides the point and it's, it's probably been a good 20 years now probably mm-hmm. 20 years ago or so when I was 40 okay mm-hmm. and I, I said well I'm, I need to get a magnifying glass to see this <laughs> <laughs> I, I didn't even think I needed eyeglasses Mm-hmm. Uh, oh, here it is. T- today is uh, National Cheeseburger Day and National Aging Awareness Day. Did you know that? No. So I don't know, I don't know if that was uh, part of the September is Healthy Aging Month. I have that in my notes. Dr. Michael Clooney, uh, Cooney is on the phone. He is a practicing retina specialist, an ophthalmologist, and actively involved in the clinical development of new diagnostic and therapeutic modalities for vitreo retinal disease hope i'm saying that right he's going to talk to us about maintaining our eye health as we age because i went from a magnifying glass to eyeglasses mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> i'm so dopey i thought a magnifying glass is what was, was all i needed good morning dr cooney good morning sir good morning larry and robin uh, you got me in the mood for a cheeseburger here. <laughs> <laughs> where are you where are you calling from uh, I'm in New York City. Oh, all right. Excellent. Uh, yeah, so f- 20 years ago, I was 40, and it was about that same time that I noticed my... And I was always I was always bragging. I got perfect eyesight, which I did all my life. Well, until around 40 or so, then it started disappearing. Yeah, you and me both. That's kind of what happens in the 40s is you start to kind of need uh, reading glasses because you know, the lens in the eye, which ultimately becomes a cataract, starts to harden, and these are kind of normal things that happen. But... You know, Larry and Robin, an important thing is that, you know, patients shouldn't just assume that that's all that's going on because it could be something completely different, um, which leads us to kind of one of the main take-home messages really here for your audience, which is that if you're having a change in vision, don't try to self-diagnose yourself. And certainly everybody after the age of 50 on an annual basis really needs to get in to see their ophthalmologist for a full dilated eye examination to be screened for a whole really? bunch of different eye problems. Uh, including what we're calling wet macular degeneration, which is kind of the main thing we're here to talk about today. So I don't know who whose influence was better, mine or yours. I influenced you to want a, a cheeseburger. You're influencing me to go to the eye doctor. <laughs> there you go. Right. Yeah. Uh, which is why you're on the air with us today. So, uh, well, that's a good, you know what? And I'm gu- I'm I'm pleading guilty to the diagnosing myself. I'm I'm the guy who goes to get the seven dollar pair of glasses at the at the uh, pharmacy. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and, and, and most people do. Uh, I'm just saying that it may not always be due to just, just needing reading glasses. Certainly, if you have try reading glasses and, and you're still not seeing well, something more significant may be going on. Uh, so so uh, it, it, some of the more serious eye cases that you have to deal with. What, well, let me start with this one. What is vitreoretinal disease? What is that? So vitreoretinal refers to, uh, well, that's the field that I'm in. Um, uh, the retina is the part of the eye that's like the film of a camera that we're going to talk more about that in the context of macular degeneration in a moment. And the vitreous is the gel that fills the inside of your eye, which you probably heard about in eighth grade science class, and it's the thing that produces floaters. And I'm sure you may have noticed some little floaters in your vision. Um, oh, I have. Yeah. What are they? Yeah, you know what I'm talking yeah, about. Those I little have. protein pumps that move around inside the gel in your eye. Um, and they're kind of normal, but they can also be a sign of other issues. So if you have new onsets of floaters, you need to get in to get checked to be sure you don't have a retinal tear or a retinal detachment. So, but and why don't how, come, is referring to. how come we don't see them all the time? 
Uh, it's a good thing you don't see them all the time. Most people will see them if you kind of look at a, on a blue sky day and kind of look up. As, they're those little things that look like little paramecians kind of floating around right. inside your eye. Uh, they're kind of fun to look at. But as you get older, <laughs> what happens is the gel in your eye starts to just get a little bit more liquidy and it starts to degenerate a little bit. Uh-huh. And that can cause an abrupt increase in floaters. And, oh. and, you know, sometimes you notice and sometimes you don't, but it's a common thing to happen pretty much to everybody at some point after age 50. Does any anything nutritional help it, like vitamins or, or kale no, or something? That's, <laughs> a, that's a good question. I get asked this every day because it's a common problem. The answer is no. Well, but it's... Max generation, which we're here to talk about, the answer for some of that is, is maybe yes. Oh, maybe yes. And I, I think in, in to, to, to defend the rest of us, I think we see so many commercials or hear the commercials or read the, the ads indicating that this vitamin will help you with your eyes or whatever. I mean, that, it seems like a natural thing to want to ask somebody who would know. Yes. Um, look, if you go to the vitamin aisle in any grocery store or pharmacy, you know the vast amounts of vitamins that are there that proclaim to do lots of things. Mm-hmm. From, from a eye perspective, and probably in, in general health in, in health in general, the only vitamin that's actually been proven to do anything uh, for, uh, for a medical condition is a high dose vitamin formula for dry macular degeneration, which is the key thing we're here to talk about today, which through National Eye Institute clinical trials, which went on for 20 years, proved that a certain vitamin formula was helpful in slowing down the progression of that type of macular degeneration. Uh, they are not for everybody, and uh, patients need to consult with their doctor to be sure whether these vitamins are appropriate for them, but uh, that is the only vitamin that's been proven. All the other things that people come in and ask about, uh, bilberry, salt, palmetto, this, that, and the other thing, mm. there's no scientific evidence that any of those things play a role for eye health at this time. Really? So, so did I miss it, or did you say it and I just didn't pay attention? What, what is the vitamin that helps with, with the macular degeneration? So the vitamin that, was a, that the National Institute of Clinical Trials studied, it's called the AREDS, Age-Related Eye Disease Study Vitamin Number 2. It was a, a two-part study. And these are available over-the-counter without a prescription. Uh, we call them AREDS vitamins. They're okay. for people who have been diagnosed with certain levels of dry macular degeneration and wet macular degeneration. They are not for somebody who has a normal retina in hopes of preventing uh, a condition. Oh, okay. Something. I'm glad you said that. Yeah. So, uh, so you really need to talk to your doctor to see whether or not you know you should be on it or not. And the only way to, to for them to know is to dilate your eye, look and see do you have anything that would... Um, put you at risk and, and, and then therefore put you on the vitamins. Oh, wow. Okay. Well, you talked about wet macular degeneration and dry macular degeneration. Do they both cause a person to go blind? Uh, good question. So let me just back up for a second and talk about macular degeneration. It is the leading cause of why people over the age of 55 lose straight ahead central vision. And it's a big problem and a growing public health problem as the baby boomers age. This is just going to increase. Uh, right now there's 10 million people with it, and it'll be about 20 million within the next 10 years. So in the, the retina is the part of the eye that's like the film of a camera. It's what's responsible for producing vision. And the macula is the part of your retina that's responsible for your fine straight-ahead vision. So reading, seeing faces, watching TV, I think what most people would consider their precious vision. And what happens is early on, uh, people can develop little aging changes in the macula um, that are oftentimes without symptoms, and that's what we call the dry form of macular degeneration. And the only way you know if you have that is if a doctor dilates you and looks and tells you you've got dry macular degeneration, you would not know. Now, dry macular degeneration usually does not cause symptoms, and in very rare circumstances, dry macular degeneration can cause a very rapid or can cause a very severe loss of vision but that does so over the course of many, many, many years and very, very slowly. The key, the other type of macular degeneration which can develop from the dry is the wet form. And that's where suddenly a little blood vessel starts to grow in that same area. And it's like a little weed that starts to grow in a garden. It wants to take over the entire garden and will do so rapidly unless you do something to stop it. So in wet macular degeneration, you can have a very abrupt and rapid loss of your straight ahead vision over the course of weeks to months and that can be a result in a permanent scar and a permanent loss of your central vision which is devastating to a person the good news however is that there is a treatment for that type of macular degeneration oh wow, wow. Um, I, I know this was a short interview and we've already gone over the time so 
can you stay a little bit longer because there is a phone call coming in? Or do you yeah, have can, do you have to no, run? I can, I can I can give you a few more pieces of information that I think would kind of round this out. Oh, so good. The medication that was approved by uh, one of the first medications approved by the FDA for wet macular degeneration is a medicine called Lucentis, which is highly effective in stabilizing that condition. Okay. And in, in about 95% of patients, the vision can be stabilized, and about 40% of patients' vision can actually be improved, which up until we had that medication was unheard of. Like any medication, you need to have continuous follow-up with your medical doctor for continuous treatment for this because it's just a stable, stabilizing treatment. And obviously, you need to talk to your doctor to be sure that this medication is right for you. Okay. Um, and I have some questions, but let me let a listener ask a question. Good morning. Thank you for calling and for waiting. You're on the air. Uh, yes. Thank you, doctor. I recently read where they are they're developing or have developed an eye drop that will uh, uh, get rid of uh, cataracts. Can you comment on that? Uh, thank you for your question. Um, there are a number of different things that have been you know, talked about through the years and eye drops and things like that that claim to help with cataracts. The short answer is there's no clinically proven eye drop available currently that has any benefit for cataract. Uh, I know that I've seen things on the store shelves that claim to do that. Um, you know, from the perspective of the American Academy of Ophthalmology, the short answer is, you know, that that is snake oil at this point. So, mm -hmm. the only treatment for cataract really is cataract surgery. Okay, so I, I, real quick, I went to the, I, I just put AREDS2 in uh, the Google thing, and it came up with a product made by Bosch and Loam. And, uh, and, and it says here, uh, current and former smokers, unlike the original AREDS formula, which smokers were advised to avoid because it contained beta carotene, this formula is beta carotene free. Um, so uh, yeah. <clears throat> Smoking is a risk factor for macular degeneration. Okay. Um, it, it's a, it should be avoided for lots of health reasons, including the eyes. Um, you know, there is a website, um, Larry and Robin, preventblindness.org, okay. which has a wealth of additional information on all of this topic. Unfortunately, I, we need to move on to a different interview here. I'm so sorry to... Oh, that's okay. And I, that was my fault. I, I kind of took you a little bit longer than we should have. Well, thank you for the information. Blindness.org. I think you just hung up. Prevent Pre blindness. Preventblindness.org is, is the website. And... Uh, uh, I guess we probably got the publicist mad then, didn't we? Yeah. All right, we'll take a little break. We will be, well, it was interesting. It was interesting. There was more stuff. information than we had time for. Yes. What do it I was do? Good. What it do was, I do? It What's was my good. job? What's my job? No, Ted's a good guy. He won't be mad. We'll be right back. The weather is brought to you by myfwc.com. Safe boating is no accident. A flood watch is in effect for coastal counties through this evening. There'll be drenching showers and thunderstorms mainly in the afternoon today, otherwise, variably cloudy.